welcomes the Spirit of Hope United Methodist Church worship service. My name is Deborah Schauer, and I am the pastor of the good people connected with Spirit of Hope United Methodist Church located in Peoria, Arizona. I'm not sure if you're from the state of Arizona or maybe elsewhere, but here in Arizona, oh, it's hot. But you already knew that. (laughs) Arizona is hot. So I say to you this morning on this wonderful hot day in Arizona, good morning or maybe afternoon or good evening. Again, I start with these various greetings from the quietness of our worship center to film yet uh, another message that will hopefully bring you peace, provide words of understanding, maybe give you hope, maybe even put a smile upon your, your face and in your soul as we come together through the internet to worship God. Oh, what a, a wild week we have experienced. Oh, I'm, I'm really having a hard time coming with, up with adjectives to describe the weeks that uh, we have gone through uh, experiencing. I know we cannot wait until that time when we will be able to come together uh, and worship. Uh, or maybe even have a calm and tranquil week where things um, are as they used to be. Always wondering what, uh, that things will maybe come back to be as normal if we can ever see normal again. But until that time, you know, I, I, like you, will continue to pray for our hearts to be softened and truths to be exposed. So today, as uh, with many days, we come seeking knowledge of how it is with your soul.
Thank you, Joe Porch, so much for sharing your gift uh, that helps us all to really go down deep and see how it is with our soul. We sure appreciate you. Now, even though we'd rather come together in this place of worship, we all understand that for our safety and well-being, we have to do worship a little differently nowadays. And we are not interacting as we normally do on Sunday mornings. We hold tight, though, to the knowledge that we will come together with each other sometime in the future. So, until that time comes, may we all, oh, be patient as we wait for uh, that time to come. But in the meantime... You know what I have for you? I have some announcements, things that are going on within our church. Even though we're staying at home and and not coming to visit, there's still some stuff that's happening. Since I'm not sure if you're watching um, our worship, um, this worship video, I want to invite you to your computer, your tablet, or your smartphone on Sunday at 10 a.m. for a Zoom gathering, check-in, and prayer time. An invitation will be sent to all of the emails that are basically connected with um, Spirit of Hope United Methodist Church. All are welcome to this gathering. But you do need an invitation to come into the Zoom meeting. So if you want to join and if you haven't received uh, an invitation, please let us know. Uh, just register uh, through Spirit of Hope UMC at yahoo.com. On July 18th, which is next Saturday, from 8 a.m. until 11 a.m., you're invited to bring your donated items for Heart Pantry uh, to our church so that we can deliver it to them. Uh, you go on uh, line, you will find all the items that they desperately need posted there. Uh, this is, uh, we've had a very long connection with Heart Pantry, which takes care of the homeless teenagers that are in our community. So this is one way that we can reach out and help them. I believe that I've heard the number said 150 that they supply all of these items too. So we, they do need your help as long with other churches in the area are helping them, but we can do our part too. I received this week uh, of another opportunity to help another nonprofit organization, Golden Gate Community Center, whom we donate Christmas gifts uh, each year uh, for a number of years Um, is asking that we help also with their back-to-school drive. The items that they need are also listed in the visionary um, this past Thursday that was sent out. But you can go to the website to find um, more things that they need. We're doing a drop-off here at the church for those items, too, that we can deliver to Golden Gate Community Center. That date is going to be a Thursday, July 30th. At uh, from 9 until 11 in the morning, and then from 4 to 6 in the evening. So that's another time that you can basically come together. So now, let us prepare ourselves after all of those announcements for a time of worship. Prayer is a time that we come together that is very important. For prayer is a source of our strength and virtue. It transforms our lives and enables us to become who we are made to be. This happens Because prayer is our lifeline to God. 
in it, we uh, not only meet God, but we also allow God to enter into union with us. God lives in us, and we live in God. This profound and absolute unity is what we are made for. However, sometimes, you know, prayer uh, can be a struggle. For we allow many things to get in the way of our relationship with God. It's essential to be, um, it's essential to a strong prayer life that we understand those struggles. By understanding them, we are in a position to face them and then overcome them. That is why each and every day we should really take a time for prayer. That is why during our worship service, we set aside a time of prayer. Because we, this church, Spirit of Hope, United Methodist Church, knows the importance of connecting with God through prayer. So will you pray with me? Gracious Lord, as we come to this time of prayer, we hear you. Your calling. How can we keep from singing? How can we keep our, our lips from proclaiming the good news that Jesus Christ is risen, bringing healing and forgiveness to all? For in the life of Jesus, we have been freed making us a part of a, a, a loyal priesthood. Whether we have seen or believe without seeing, we have found life in his name. Do we need to see God to believe in God? Is seeing truly believing are we to be prisoners in our senses, distrusting and, and rejecting whatever we cannot see, touch, or hear? When those doubts and those questions come before us, you show how faithful you are, Lord. For you give sight to the blind, you carry us when we are weary. You call us to your side. The locked room of our hearts opens with the turn of your key. Jesus Christ is master, leader, savior, Messiah, faithful witness, son of God, alpha and omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And to you, we express all honor and glory in the quietness of this time we, we come to get connected with you we ask you to speak to our hearts to give us insight to what you would have us do we lift up to you those concerns that we have for loved ones and ask that your healing peace surround each one of them. Help us all to lay down the situations in our lives that bring us anxiety so that we may experience your peace and above all reprimand us the actions that we do that does not reflect your love. Help each one of us to remember to, to do no harm, to do good and stay in love with God. Be with us now as we share together this prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today, uh, as we delve into Acts, the rest of the story, comes from chapter 5, beginning at verse 17. Then the high priest took action, he and all who were with him, that is, the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out, and said, Go, stand in the temple, and tell the people the whole message about this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple by daybreak, and they went on with their teaching. When the high priest and those with him arrived, they called together the council and the whole body of elders of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the temple police went there, they did not find them in prison. So they returned and reported, oh, we found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the door. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now, when the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these words, well, they were perplexed about them and wondering what might be going on. Then someone arrived and announced, Look, the men whom we put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the temple police and brought them, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet, here you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings and you have determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus whom we have killed, you have killed, by hanging him on the tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a short short time. 
Then he said to them, Fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do with these men. For some time ago, Thaddeus rose up, claimed to be somebody, and a number of men, oh, about 400, joined him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and, and disappeared. After him, Judas, uh, the Galilean, rose up at a time of census and got people to follow him and also pers- persisted. And all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone because if this plan or this understanding is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may be found fighting against God. For they were convinced by him. And when they had called in the apostles... They had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. As they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day, the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Many of you know that Skip and I have a little dog. Its name is Boots. He was a rescue dog that we adopted so that he would not be sent to the pound. You know, when you rescue a dog, their personalities and behaviors are usually embedded in them. Well, our little dog came from our neighbor who needed to be placed in a care facility. And Boots was one of five dogs that she owned. We did not even know he was even a part of the pack because the other dogs were much bigger, oh, and much louder. Little Boots was very shy, or maybe just plain scared when he came to us. Lacking many things most dogs have learned through basic training. He was not least trained. In fact, he was used to being drugged by the leash. He knew no simple commands like sit, stay, come. Anytime we tried to issue a command, he would cower and act like we were going to hit him, which we never did. But slowly, Boots, his confidence level has improved, and his obedience to certain things are better. All we have to do is tell him what to do, and either he does it or he doesn't. (laughs) Obedience. Oh, we associate the word with dog obedience. At least that's what Google does. Upon searching the Internet, you will find pages and pages relating to dog obedience, but not so much about obedience relating to humans. Most of us shy away from that word obedience, for it brings us to a place that most of us don't want to go. Obedience implies that we are not independent, that we are accountable to another, that we have someone over us, that there is a higher authority than ourselves. For most, obedience was experienced when we were children, or in reality, it was disobedience. Um, As a child, I can remember the times when I was disobedient to my parents, even though those times were few and far between. My acts of disobedience did occur, ending with some means of punishment, Now, the severity of disobedience dictated the severity of punishment. But any way you 
look at it, it was love that brought about the punishment. At the time, I, I thought I was the most uh, abused child in the small town that we lived in, in fact, if not in the world, but even to this day, the love outweighed the punishment. Through my years of growth and experience and having children of my own, I now see how extremely important obedience is. Plain and simple, if we are obedient, our, our days go good. If we are disobedient, our days are not so good. For some, this can be oh, a difficult concept to understand, especially when oh, a defiant streak exists. But let's get real. The success or failure of life hinges upon our acceptance or rejection of that word, obedience. Naturally, we all conform to others when we must. We won't speed too much above the speed limit lest we get caught and then we have to pay a fine. We won't lie, steal, cheat, unless we can get by with it. But give the chance, we um, give ourselves permission to do as we please. After all, rules are made to be broken. The truth is, for many people, obedience is, oh, an ugly word. And obey is a four-letter word. Most people don't like obedience and will put, um, will only put up with it if they have to. So when we are forced into it, we um, we give token obedience to parents, to bosses, the law, the higher authority. But willing obedience is a rarity. After all, who wants to conform to someone else's ideas, commands, orders? You know, children can hardly wait to come of age so they can do as they please. Uh, We long for promotions in the workforce. For then we will give the orders and show how it ought to be done. Why are you obedient What in you determines your obedience? You know, I believe that there are two reasons why we obey. It's either out of fear or it's out of love. Aristotle said, wicked men obey from fear. Good men obey from love. As we continue With our sermon series, Acts, the rest of the story, this total, absolute, willing obedience becomes a crucial and critical issue for the early church. Looking into God's words and this particular story relating to the history of that early Christian church, we discover these two different reasons for beating obedience. In the scripture that I just read to you, we find the apostles busy um, at doing exactly what God told them to do. Now, we are not um, told how many are actually doing this or, or which ones are specifically doing this, but it does seem that they're being led by Peter. They were teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. They perform miracles in the name of Jesus. They heal the sick in the name of Jesus. They exorcised evil spirits in the name of Jesus. Even the dead came to life in the name of Jesus. All very powerful results followed their obedience. The obedient commitment arising out of the apostles' conviction about Christ and the love that Christ had for them resulted um, in marvelous things in their ministry. They were fully aware that the Holy Spirit was their 
their colleague. And the one who worked with them, as we read again these words from verse 32, we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The witness we make for Christ is always a a mutual witness. We cannot be a witness without the help of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit, in turn, is limited for the Spirit will not be a witness except through you and me, obedient disciples. It has been by cooperation, absolute obedience, on our part is a necessity. But I believe the motive behind this conviction, this obedience, was love, as they realized more and more all that God had done for them. How much God truly loved them. They were obedient out of love. But just because we are obedient out of love and in and of itself is no indication that God is insulating us against the hard knocks of life. Everything is not always rosy and um, anyone who decides to be fully obedient to the gospel mandate knows there will be some trouble And we see trouble arising for the apostles. The jealousy of the high priest and his associates, who were members of the Sanhedrin, prompted them to have the apostles arrested and jailed for teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. When they are brought before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest, once again, reading from the scripture, he says this, we gave you strict orders not to teach in his, this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. Ah, the conflict between love and fear now begins. The Sanhedrin tried to get them to be obedient out of fear. Peter and the apostles answered their accusers with irrefutable logic as they said these words, we must obey God rather than human authority. Oh, in other words, what they're basically saying, you told us not to preach in this name. The Spirit told us to preach in this name. So who is the higher authority? What possible options did we have to Obey God or you? The angel of God said, speak. And the rulers of the city said, speak not. How much did they love God? How much did they, they fear human authority? Now, the apostles were not anti-authority. They understood obedience to those in power, and they were not stupid. But the pivotal issue was whose authority is going to be dictated to them. Obedience to whom was their question. And for them, God had the final word. God was the supreme authority. They would gladly bow to human authority until it clashed with divine authority. And then the choice must be on God's side. There was more love for God than fear of these men. And Peter proceeds to explain why they chose to be obedient to God when he said these words The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you killed by hanging on a tree. What marvelous convictions Peter had. Jesus, whom they killed by crucifixion, is risen, is ascended, is reigning, and is saving. What a wonderful word from God 
for us to remember <laughs> for days such as these. Our Savior, whom, whom governments ignore, whom media ignores or cast belittlements upon, whom many disdain, is on the throne <laughs> of the university in glory. God exalted him at the right hand as leader and savior so that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. What glorious good news given to them and also given to us. But this good news is not accepted as good news by everyone. Oh, these men were furious and wanted to have the apostles put to death. Why wouldn't they? Well, they killed Jesus. Why not go ahead and kill off the followers? Yes, we'll have some problems if we walk with obedience with our Lord. Not everyone will like us. Uh, not everyone will talk about how nice we are, sometimes in spite of all that we do, things go wrong. Where did we ever get the distorted notion that we as Christians have uh, the right for things to always go well for us? Why would we expect life to be a bed of roses? Why would we expect to have no sickness or pain in our lives or our loved ones? Why expect that those who are dear and near to us will never die? Why would we expect no burglars, um, thieves, to come and steal our property? Why would we expect to have no oh, mysterious problems or pandemics enter into our lives? We can't expect everyone to praise and love and accept and understand us. We can't expect affirmation for all of our actions, even when huh, they are motivated by love and obedience. It didn't happen to those early disciples, and it won't happen to us. But wait. An unexpected advocate for these men came from this interrogation. Gamaliel, a, a, a Pharisee, uh, a, a teacher of the law, spoke up and addressed the court and said these words, Oh, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. Because if this plan or this understanding is of human origin, well, it will fail. But if it's of God, who will not be able to overthrow them? In this case, you may even be found fighting against God. Did you understand what he was saying there? Even Gamaliel realized you, you can't stop men and women who are obeying God because of this kind of love and this kind of devotion. Gamaliel's logic prevailed. And so the court had the apostles flogged and ordered them to speak no more in the name of Jesus. And they let them go free. 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 You know, thank goodness for us that they did not follow that order. So is there anything we Christians of today need more than uncompromising, unreserved, uh, continuous obedience to the Lord? Obedience out of love. For God will set us apart to do great things. May your obedience be a determined through love. Amen. So peace to you from one 
who is and was and is to come. Grace and peace to you from the one who loves us, frees us, the one who gives us repentance and forgiveness. You know, as God sent Jesus into the world, so the Spirit now sends us to continue God's holy work. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bye-bye. Have a great week. Hopefully um, you stay safe and you enjoy all that God is doing in your lives. Be obedient. Bye-bye.